And we're back. Now, this time, we're going to do the tube to plate transfer lab. So I take a look here. I've already completed the tube to tube transfer, so I don't need to create a new thing for it. Uh, I'm going to select a DNA's auger plate with methyl green. So DNA's auger methyl green plate, and we'll just call that D-A-M-G-P. Cool. Now, in order to inoculate this plate, it's going to be fairly similar to inoculating a tube. I'm going to turn the flamer on. I'm going to flame my loop. I'm going to remove the caps. Flame the inoculum. I'm going to go in there. Actually, I don't think it recorded that. I'm going to stab the inoculum. And then I'm going to squiggle it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth over there until it changes. Oops. No, no, that's fine. Uh, now, you don't ever play flame a plate because they're made out of plastic. And if you flame them, they'll melt. So you usually just buy them sterile and you try to have them open for as little time as possible. Re-sterilize my loop. Take this, drop it. Oh yes. Uh, according to the incubator, this is or the uh, instructions, this is the only media that should be incubated at room temperature. Which is 25 degrees Celsius. All right, so I want to drop that in the 25 degrees Celsius. Turn off my burner. Go to the next day, grab it out of the 25. And I see that the uh, that first off, the colonies are yellow. That's due to the color pH indicator, the methyl green that was in the plate. I also see that the the colonies where it's growing are surrounded by this halo of lighter material. That's the DNAs in action. So it's been uh, cleaving the DNA that was in the plate and uh, that means that the bacteria has DNAs which is an enzyme that cleaves DNA and that's what's causing reduce uh, in the the cloudiness of the plate so so is it possible for there to be bacteria in the plate but the DNA tests DNAs test to be negative yeah if you're growing bacteria that are DNAs negative then there would be plenty of DNA on the plate that wouldn't get cleaved. But we're going to record some results here. Uh, so DNAs is positive. And that gets thrown away. Okay. The next thing that it wants me to do is take a look at the lab report. Let's take a look here. So, my gram reaction eliminated 71. The acid from glucose eliminated 3. The mannitol fermentation eliminated 21. Sorbitol fermentation eliminated 1. The urea hydrolysis eliminated 16. And the DNA is eliminated 7. So, I have 5 microbes, which it could still possibly be. Now, once you get it down to, like, basically single digits of possible microbes, it's not a bad idea to take a look at your identification matrix and see what test you should do next. Now, there's a bunch of different results here, but basically plus means 
that it should be, you know, this bacteria, any of these ones here, should be positive. If it says, so Staphylococcus uh, auricularis should be positive for acid from glucose. All right? That's what that means. If you see a negative sign, so uh, Macrococcus caseolyticus should be negative for alpha hemolysis right here. The positive and the negative are what you want to pay attention to. Any of this other stuff, like D or brackets positive or brackets negative, basically mean that it's indeterminate, at least for our purposes today. So it asks me, based on the information in the portion of the table displayed above, would acid from glucose and arginine dihydrolase be useful tests to perform now for identifying your unknown? Uh, so would acid from glucose, I already did that one. Uh, that was a test that we did last time, so it wouldn't be a useful test for me to perform now, because I already did it. Uh, what about the arginine dihydrolase? So arginine dihydrolase, I take a look here, my assigned unknown doesn't have a score in there for it. I see that two of the five organisms which it could possibly be are positive, and one is negative, and two of them are indeterminate. So uh, the arginine dihydrolase test is potentially useful. No matter which way it comes out, it's going to eliminate uh, at least one, possibly two of the remaining organisms, and there's two that it's just not going to tell me much about. So it might not be the most useful test I could possibly do, but it definitely would be useful. So tube to plate technique can be used to create bacterial lawns. It wants me to select a nutrient auger plate and select a sterile swab. All right. So for the medium, we're going to do a nutrient auger plate, call that NA. This is like one of the most general growing media. If you just want to grow bacteria, nutrient auger is usually the thing to use. It's not going to tell you anything about it, but it'll grow the bacteria just great. I'm going to turn the burner on. We want to select a swab. Swab is for transferring lots of bacteria from one thing to another. We don't sterilize the swab because it's made out of cotton. If you stick it in a Bunsen burner, it'll light up in flames. However, we still need the Bunsen burner because we're still going to want to flame our inoculum. Now I'm going to take my swab and dip it in here. And then I'm going to move it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth all over this thing. All right? I'm going to take this. I can flame it again. I guess I don't really have to because it's not my sample. But if I ever uh, want to use it again. So let's see here. The... I should have looked this up beforehand. Am I doing a bacitracin? Yeah, two units. Bacitracin, two units. Boom. And now replace the caps. So what this thing that it dropped in here is, is a, uh, it's an antibiotic called bacitracin. Some bacteria are immune to this antibiotic, naturally, and some bacteria are not. So what we're going to test is to see whether or not these bacteria are immune to it. Drop it in the 37 degree incubator. And one day forward. Grab our plate. Now you see how around the antibiotic there's this empty area. 
That means that the bacteria won't go near the antibiotic because this antibiotic is a poison to them. That this bacteria is vulnerable to bacitracin. So uh, we would call this a sensitive result. And would this antibiotic be effective for treatment? Uh, yes, actually, it would. Uh, Bacitracin is a kind of nasty antibiotic to use. It's uh, usually only used for topical infections, but uh, still, it, it kills it just fine. So let's record some results here. So susceptibility, yes, positive. It is susceptible. And it automatically disposes. Now we're going to go back to the uh, identification matrix. And I've managed to eliminate everything. So let me see my lab report here. Eliminated five, remaining zero. So I obviously did something wrong at some point. I think it, it was probably the acid from glucose test. Um, which I probably recorded as positive, but should have recorded as negative because I wasn't paying a lot of attention. I was still figuring out the software. Either way... I think that we have gone through and know how to use the software now. So if you want information about your microbes or microbes that are possible, you can go to here, view identification matrix if there were some stuff here let's actually see if I can go to my lab report and erase something not really uh, identify record results acid from glucose. We're going to call that negative. Why not? Here you can change stuff. All right, well, I'm almost out of time on my recording software, so as you can see, it's a complicated bit of software. Even I'm not sure exactly what I did wrong here. Uh, but I think we got the gist of exactly how to go about recording results and streaking media and plates. So uh, I will... Hopefully, see you guys again soon, or you'll see me again soon, or hear from me again soon, or whatever, however that goes. Uh, either way, this is your professor signing off.